go back to your original question. I do think that authorial status and position mm -hmm. does matter in one sense in okay. that the early Christian community, especially when we're talking about the canon of scripture, what books are considered and recognized as inspired for the new Testament, the main criteria that the early church used to discern that was, is it connected to someone who knew Jesus or someone who knew someone who knew Jesus? And so right. in that sense, its status as being connected directly with the apostolic community is very important, but we still have writings like the book of Hebrews where it's anonymous in the sense that we have no formal designation consistently and you don't know who's writing it. And yet the early church still connects it to the early apostolic community despite that. Right. That's yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, it is. Yeah. So it does matter in the sense of for the early church, especially with regard to canonicity, that something was written by an eyewitness or someone who knew the eye, an eyewitness. Right. Yeah. And, and I think those are important points as well. Uh, a couple of things I, are interesting when you look at the, the uh, compilation of the canon, how the canon came to be. First of all, apostolic authority is key, uh, especially in an ancient culture. And, and this is another thing, Wes, I'm sure you're familiar with, is they valued eyewitness testimony, verbal testimony above written testimony. They actually, if you could go and hear the eyewitnesses, that was the best you can get. And that's why Paul says, even in 1 Corinthians 15, hey, go out and ask these guys. Don't just yeah. take my letter at face. Go out and ask them. And I, I think it's it's Bauckham that points out what happens is about 60 AD, um, the apostles are getting older and they're starting to die off. And somebody is going to say, hey, we better put their words down on paper before they don't uh, aren't around to act tell us directly anymore. And so you get a couple of things that follow from that. First of all, because apostolic authority becomes important, all of the Gnostic texts, all of the fraudulent stuff that show up in the in the second century, try to attach themselves to an apostle, right? The gospel yes, of Thomas, that's right. the, uh, uh, the yeah. gospel of Peter. You, you, you have all of these things. Why is the gospel of Judas the gospel of Judas? Because he was at least one of the 12. So there's a tradition saying that if you're going to have any credence at all within the early church, you better attach yourself to an apostolic figure. That's interesting to show that the original documents that had credence were attached to an apostolic figure. But the second piece that's fascinating is if I was making this up from scratch, I would never pick these guys, Mark and Luke. Well, Mark and Luke, right? Would be I mean, those, are, those are big. You, and, and Matthew yeah. was, was a kind of a, a secondary character in all the gospel accounts. He's not a, he's not the primary mover. He's not, you know, one of the big three, John, yeah, you'd, you'd James, pick Peter, and, Peter, James, Peter. John, and maybe Andrew, maybe, or something, maybe right? Andrew, somebody like that. But, but, but I think that testifies to their credibility on top of uh, the other issues. Yeah. I, Wes, you want, I think, you I think to that's that? a good point. Yeah. yeah I think, I think that's exactly, that's a, a really good point to 